What's happening, lovely free melons? I am Eli Martyr. I'm so happy to be back with you guys here, and thank you for joining me here on the channel once again. I just came back from a very long trip away from home. So I was, I live in Toronto, and I was shooting in Calgary, shooting a film in Calgary, and so I was there for just about two months. So I'm back in town now, and I've got a lot of stuff to catch up on. I've not been as attentive with all my YouTubing as, as I normally am, so it's good I can get back into uh, getting through to all your consultation requests and just a, a whole bunch of stuff. So it's really good to be home. I'm happy to be back. The production I was working on did offer to fly the performers to Calgary. And of course, that wasn't an option for me because unfortunately, in Ontario, we are apparently under a dictatorship, a medical dictatorship. And because of my choice to not make the ultimate health sacrifice and compromise my health integrity for conceivably the rest of my life because of my decision not to do that, you guys know what I mean. The Because of my decision to reject that, uh, I was not able to fly and so I had to drive from Toronto to Calgary, which is a very, very, very long drive. And it was a beautiful experience. I'm so happy it happened that way. It was a gorgeous experience, particularly on the way back. On the way there, I was a bit rushed because I had to get to Calgary um, and arrive on a Monday, but I had to work in Toronto uh, the weekend prior. So I fasted and just drove very often through through the night. I did stop and sleep when I needed it. Anyway, I don't recommend that for anybody. Don't do that. It's 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 very unsafe. So don't do that. Uh, but the way home was a lot more relaxed. So I could drive during the daytime only, sleep in the evening and see some sights, do some exploring. Uh, it was just gorgeous. Saw, saw lots of wildlife. During some time off, I went up to go to Banff National Park. Took some treks through the woods, saw the mountains, got right up close and personal with a whole bunch of deer. Oh, I even saw some bighorn, which was just incredible. I'd never seen them up close and personal like that. So it was uh, it was quite a wonderful trip. Uh, I did a little bit of vlogging. Um, you can check back on my videos. I did one vlog where uh, my uh, my lovely camera operator, Kristen, she took me around the town and showed me what's what, and we went to a farmer's market. And so, uh, so you can check out that vlog if you want. You know what's really funny? So... During the first week of rehearsals, we started to notice, the production started to notice that now on this show, there were tons and tons and tons of stunt guys and gals being hired from all over Canada. We've got like 70 to 100, uh, no, closer to 100 stunt people that are all being brought in to work on this project. And isn't it funny? I mentioned making the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate health sacrifice. We had dozens of people getting sick okay uh i think some didn't actually get sick but they were just testing positive on tests which which means nothing of course as we know now 
Uh, so that mean, testing positive means absolutely nothing. But we did have a whole number of people actually getting sick. And so production was all worried. They're like, oh my God, the stunt department. Oh, there's such a high risk department on this, on this show, on this production. And it was just, you know, it was just fun to just sit back and watch the circus and be just completely insulated from any of the fear, any of the worry. Didn't give a crap about any social distancing or whatnot. Never wearing masks. Just ign- just ignoring all of it. Watching it all play out and just, you know, myself and all the other performers that did not make the ultimate sacrifice. Um, we're just, we're just kind of watching. We were fine. Like nothing. And we're mixing and mingling in the most intimate proximity to all of the people that were getting sick. And again, of the ones getting sick, some of them, having their first and second shots, some getting booster shots on top of that, and just like, oh yeah, it's a, ah, it's a wild ride. What the f- Anyhow, so what I'm going to do today is I just wanted to share with you how I managed to maintain my fruit-based lifestyle while being away from home and away from, you know, all my my comfortable resources here at home and working in Calgary. But I just wanted to share with you what I'm doing because, yeah, it's it's just nice for you guys to to know how I go about my, my routine when I am not home. So the first thing that I realized that I was missing that I didn't bring from home was this guy was a big mixing bowl in a hotel you might not have access to a big bowl if you're lucky maybe you've got a couple of like really tiny little plates but not only does this serve as a container for food it was also helpful for me when I wanted to soak and wash my fruit and I also brought some aluminum free baking soda and then I had to go buy this bowl so that when I did buy fruits like apples or, or or peaches or grapes or whatever it was I would always have a container to wash them off in and then I could eat them later so that's one thing that I did the other thing I did was just get my bearings jump onto Google take a look at all the different types of grocery stores in my area and take a couple days to just visit and figure out what was in my surroundings. Luckily, the hotel we were staying at had complimentary breakfasts where they did offer um, bananas sometimes and very often cantaloupe, cut up cantaloupe and cut up pap- um, pineapple. So that was a no-brainer. Now, you might not be staying in a hotel that has complimentary breakfast. You might not have a production that has hired you to, to be there. Then you just make sure to, like I was saying, Go around and get your bearings and see what grocery stores are around. I was lucky this time I was in a big city. You might not be in a big city wherever it is you're traveling to. So again, just figure out what you have the ability to to get and then you can determine what you're going to be eating from then on. Okay, so that's step one. Just get your bearings. I also brought uh, this guy. This is a little spiralizer for zucchinis or carrots or whatever you want. It's a little hand crank spiralizer. I don't eat zucchini noodles or whatnot. This is not a staple for my diet. It's not something I do all the time. But I just figured that if I'm traveling and I might be, uh, might want to prepare some like easy meals, I thought that maybe most stores have zucchini or even cucumbers or carrots or whatnot. So if I was ever stuck, then I could just prepare a big bowl of whatever. Uh, so, so this was, this was handy and I did make some, some nice zucchini pastas for myself and, and other people. That was a more fun thing, but that's not super necessary. That's just something that I brought. And of course, I don't go anywhere without my handy knife. If I'm at work, 
just something to have with me if I want to cut up melon or cut up whatever oranges without, you know, really digging in with my fingernails, just like really easy. So I always uh, carry something with me so that I can uh, cut up some fruit whenever I need. If I bring melons to work, then it's really handy to have just a knife on you so that you can get through the melon and then eat it just like you're holding a bowl in your hand, this big fruit bowl. So very, very handy when you are on the move. For the most part, while I was working, I didn't eat while I was at work. On set, when you're working on a film, the hours are very, very, very long. Typically, when that's the job, I always just find it easier to not worry about food and then wait till the day is over and then I can eat. Okay, so that's mostly what I did for the entire duration of my stay when I was on set working. Some days we had time uh, prior to our call time. And so I would eat before I left or before I got to work. And, but then I wouldn't eat while I was, while I was actually working. Okay. So, and it's nice to be able to be very, very comfortable without anything, you know, sometimes not even water while I was working. It's, it's really nice to have that power over yourself, uh, because it just, it allows you to be just free, <laughs> just freer. So those were the tools that I brought with me. Now, what was I eating? So like I said earlier, I used melons, cantaloupe and pineapples, because that's what was being offered at the breakfast table, and bananas. There were tons of bananas that they always had sometimes on some days, not all days. So I ate a lot more bananas than I usually do. And then the melons and pineapples were a no-brainer. Okay. When I wasn't staying with the hotel, what else did I eat while I was there? To be honest, not much besides besides those things. I did have pears, uh, pears and apples. I did have, um, I had oranges because I had a lot of bananas. Sometimes I would use my big mixing bowl and just dump a bunch of bananas in there, mix it around with a bunch of cut up pears or cut up apple. And that made a fantastic meal whenever, whenever I felt like doing that. When I did my zucchini pastas, then I would usually just grab some avocado, crush it up, maybe a little bit of tomato and uh, maybe just some other light, light leafy greens, mix that up and then have that for, you know, for a weekend or whatnot. I did that every once in a while, not too often. There were some Asian grocery stores in the area as well. Holy smokes, right? Thank you, God. So when I did go visit those, there were a couple days where I came home with some jackfruit. And also for the first time, there was something that I found that I had never tried before. I found semi-dehydrated persimmons. And those were fantastic. So these semi-dried persimmons made a fantastic snack for any time I wanted them. And I knew that I wasn't going to be able to get them as easily when coming back home. So, uh, so I <laughs> made sure to stock up and have them there for whenever I wanted. And that's pretty much it. That pretty much takes care of all the, uh, the food items that I was eating. And when would I eat them? I would eat them either when I got home from work or if we had a bit of a break before getting to set, then I would eat beforehand and then not eat again for until the next day. On the very first day of shooting, I had a little bit of a mishap on set and I, I rolled my ankle. Uh, I was doing a thing with a... Anyway, I'm not going to tell you how, but... So I roll my ankle and I go down, rolling around in pain on the ground. I'm like, oh God, you know, thinking, oh great, here we go. I just compromised my performance for the rest of the trip. It's just day one. So slowly get up, start moving around or moving my ankle around. And, you know, it didn't feel too badly, really sore, but I managed to finish off the rest of the day. Uh, without without too many complications. So the next morning I woke up and then sure enough, my ankle's really, really sore and stiff. But after a couple hours, just walking around and moving around, I noticed, you know, oh wow, my ankle's feeling really, really, really good. And, and so I went to work that day and just, you know, was careful on it, was just very careful with it. But it didn't really stop me from doing anything. And I, I was able to move around, jump, run, and my ankle was feeling really good. So I was quite happy. The very next day, it was almost like I'd made a, a 100% recovery. In fact, I was able to sprint full tilt.
made this fantastic recovery. And so the rest of the, the rest of the trip, I was like back to 100%. So it was fantastic. Really happy that I healed up so fast. So that's pretty much it for my trip. The eating again, I find, I find that it's not very difficult at all to maintain my diet when I'm traveling. Obviously, this would be a lot more difficult to stick with my diet if I'm visiting the Gobi Desert or if I'm visiting Antarctica. <laughs> If I'm visiting a really remote, isolated place, yeah, maybe this would be a bit more challenging for me to stick to a fruit-based lifestyle. So what would I have to default to? I'd have to just go down a rung in, in my hierarchy and just incorporate a lot more uh, vegetables, which are still on my menu. So I would do that. I would have to be comfortable just with eating whatever uh, vegetable meals I could manage. If there was somewhere where I had n no fruit at all, which again, if you're going to any city, this is very unlikely. But if there was some place where I had access to very minimal fruits, almost nothing, and very limited in the vegetable department too. I mean, I, I can't imagine where that would be, but yeah, sure. Maybe it would be some cooked tubers, like if they had potatoes, you can get these things anywhere. But anyhow, it was great. Whatever I had access to, that's what I ate fruit-wise, and I had no problem sticking to my fruit-based lifestyle uh, while I was while I was traveling. The drive home was fantastic. I could be a lot more leisurely with the drive home than when I got to Calgary, so I took about three, four days or so to get home, see some sights, stop off during some very picturesque and uh, and wonderful nature spots took all that in listened to some audiobooks it was a it was a beautiful ride home first thing i did when i got home was uh surprise mom just snuck in the door and you know kind of gave her a big hug and so spent the day there at home And so it was beautiful. And so now just kind of settling in and uh, going to jump back into catering to you guys out there in, uh, in YouTube land. So thank you so much. I really appreciate the time and I really appreciate your support and for bearing with me when I'm, I'm just not there because there are going to be lots of times when I'm, unfortunately, I'm just, I'm just not there. <laughs> I, I'm the worst YouTuber. I'm really the worst YouTuber out there. I, I tend to be a really simple guy. It, um, it's, it's tough for me to sometimes manage all of the emails and all of the, the, the questions that come in all the time. So it's, you have to bear with me. It's a bit overwhelming sometimes. Uh, but I, I mean, I love doing this. I love uh, helping you guys out and, um, and I will if I can. So I love you guys very much. Thank you so much for being part of this, uh, of this community here and make sure to subscribe to the Free Melon Society if you haven't done so already. And give me a like and give me a thumbs up if you are so kind as to do so. And yeah, we've got, got more stuff on the way for you. So um, sit tight, enjoy the day, and we'll see you guys next time here on the channel. Okay. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.